And look, people like that, this Gregory Andrews, are convinced the world is doomed by global warming, their children are doomed. I mean, fancy telling your children that when your chances of dying from a climate-related disaster have never been lower, never been lower. People like that are so convinced the world is doomed by global warming, largely because of the irresponsible media reporting we get of climate scares. And I'm going to give you another example. And again today on the ABC. A new report says the world's oceans are being transformed by climate change, with more underwater heat waves putting pressure on marine life, including the Great Barrier Reef. And sure enough, up bobbed someone from this climate council. It's the climate council, Tim Flannery. Remember him, the guy who once said the rains wouldn't fill our dams again, which our previous guest probably believed it wasn't true. Uh, he's up bobs another guy from the climate council with another scare. We've seen four mass bleaching events over the last decades. That means very little time for corals to recover. We've also seen species on the move. And look, this is measured in loss of tourism dollars. Now, it is true, the ABC did this morning have someone on the show that admitted that parts of the reef were actually recovering, but even that is a vast understatement of the happy truth. Joining me is reef expert and marine physicist, Dr. Peter Ridd. Peter, great to see you again. The reef is just recovering. That's all we were told by the ABC. First, tell us how it's actually going after more than 20 years of global warming scientists telling us it was dying, if not dead already. No, it's been dying for 60 years. Uh, it's only the last 25 that it's uh, been the climate change thing. But, of course, we've got record high coral in the last two years, despite these supposedly devastating four hot water bleaching events. Uh, and uh, of the 3,000 reefs of the Great Barrier Reef, we haven't lost a single one. So this is a problem with the science. You know, it's not just that the media are, are misreporting this, but also the Climate Council is putting out this stuff, which is purely wrong, and that uh, misguided chap on the, uh, the steps of Parliament House is responding to that. It's actually the scientists who are responsible for that, bar, that guy, and if he dies... Look, it's, it's tragic, you know, a guy killing himself in front of Parliament House and saying his daughter's got no future. I mean, what? that's just child abuse in my view, and it comes from reports like this. I mean, this new Climate Council report, have you checked it out? Yes, and it, it reads like a, some sort of um, fire and brimstone sermon from a, you know, a 17th century... Um, you know, vicar, you know, it's just unbelievable how negative it is. There's not a single uh, good thing. For example, it doesn't mention that we've got record high coral. Why would it? It talks about things like that our sandy beaches are going to retreat by 100 metres in the next 80 years, despite there being no significant sign of significant loss. So the problem actually is back to these, um, these so-called scientific institutions giving us these very one-sided quasi-religious documents that you really can't um, you really can't trust because they don't tell you any of the good news. There must be just one or two good things about a slightly warming ocean, like the fact the corals will grow much faster, for instance. So that report, are you serious? That report on the reef, uh, you know, oh my God, the reef, the reef, the reef, does not mention that coral cover is at near record levels uh, in recorded history. No, no, and they never do. And they don't mention things like, if you look at the data, even for the world's reef, there's been no significant reduction in coral in the world's reef in the last 25 years. So there's all this good news that you could report, um, but they don't mention almost any of that. And so that means that they're just crying wolf. You can't trust any of it. And that's actually a problem, you know, because I actually have to question myself. I, You read this and say, well, it's clearly one-sided, but... But actually, the oceans are actually quite hot at the moment, and, you know, maybe there is a problem. But if these scientists are so unreliable that they can't give a, a you know, a proper report where it looks at evidence both ways, why can we trust them? Yeah, but, Peter, this is the thing about the global warming scare, right? I do not deny, I haven't denied, that the Earth is warming slightly and that man's emissions may be a factor in that. I haven't denied that. There was a pause for a while. I did point that out. But I don't deny that generally it's been warming a little. The thing I worry, uh, challenge, is that there are huge 
catastrophes that come upon it, uh, come with it. In fact, you, as you know, we've been having record crops, although the, you know, the latest weather pattern uh, this year might change that for this year. We've had record crops. We've had fewer cyclones, etc., etc. I mean, I do not see the disaster that's supposed to come with a warning, do you? No, certainly not. But but yet climate catastrophes do happen every few hundred years. You know, you could have a huge volcanic eruption that really would cause a catastrophe. And we should be, you know, there, you know, you can't keep crying wolf on climate change because there are actually real wolves out there that are coming to get you. And one of them is some sort of climate disaster caused by a natural event. And we need to actually uh, get our food production systems uh, ready for such a thing. But we're not because we're worried about this nice, gentle warming of the climate, which maybe we're partly uh, involved with. Peter Reid, i got to challenge you for the first time ever. Uh, they can't keep crying wolf. Well, I tell you, I can point to a thousand climate scientists that have been doing that very nicely for a couple of decades and getting lots of grants, and you're wrong. So there, you see, you get a debate here, here on Sky News. Peter Reid, lovely to talk to you again.